Hello, let's talk about oligopoly and game theory. Now, oligopolies, we have a few firms producing, it could be either identical products like oil or different products like automobiles. They also have some barriers to entry, so it's hard to start up my own auto company, whether because of economies of scale or some other barrier. And so what we have is a lot of rivalry between firms. So we use game theory to explain this. And one of the main cases of game theory is a prisoner's dilemma, where you have two prisoners, they're brought in, they rob a bank, they're brought in and put in um, different interrogation cells. And they're told if they testify against the other person, they get a really low sentence. But if the other person testifies against them and they don't, they get a, the longest sentence possible. So it creates an incentive to testify against the other person. Well, let's look at it in terms of firms. So let's create a kind of a matrix here. And let's say we have two firms. Let's call it firm A over here. Firm, I'm going to change colors. Firm B up here. And let's say <coughs> they have two possibilities. Firm B can uh, have a high price. Oh, yeah, we can write that a little better, can't we? Put a C in there, or they can have a low price. And firm A can have a high price. Or a low price. Now they both both like to have a high price because it helps them act more like a monopoly, but competition would be more like they both have a low price. So if they could coordinate and work together, they could act more like a monopoly. That would be kind of like the case of a cartel. So let's do it. So let's say they both have a high price. Well, let's say they both earn ten million dollars. So A earns. 10 million for A, and let's put um, 10 million for, and actually we put, I'm going to put A on top. So here's 10 million for B, and here's 10 million for A. If they both have a low price, let's assume both of them have $3 million. So, oops, wrong one. $3 million and $3 million for B. Here's A. Okay, if A has a high price and B has a low price, well, it can steal customers away from A. So in this case, um, A with a high price, um, A would earn, let's say, one million, and B would earn 15 million, and then let's just flip it around down here. So down here, B has a high price, A has a low price, that's one million for B. And A has fifteen million dollar profit. So let's look at it. If B chooses a high price, well if B chooses a high price and I'm A, do I want to make ten million? Or do I want to make fifteen million? I want to choose a low price and make fifteen million. If B chooses a low price, do I want to make one million or do I want to make three million? Well, I want to make three million. Either way, I have an incentive to have, as A, have a low price. That means I have a dominant strategy, have a low price. Well, let's look at it the opposite way. Let's say A chooses a high price. What does B want to do? They want, does B want to have a low price and make 15 million or have a high price and make 10 million? Well, 15 million sounds better. On the other hand, if um, A has a low price, does B want to make it 3 million or 1 million? B would prefer 3 million. So it looks like we're going to end up down here 
Both of them have a dominant strategy to have a low price. This is a one-time game. If they are continually playing the game and didn't know the end period, they have a bigger incentive to cooperate and have high prices. But in a one-time game, not much incentive to cooperate. 